Hi everybody, this is Lonnie. Um, today's lesson is going to be on power settings on your machine. Um, as far as the power settings themselves go, um, when you're dealing with speed, the higher the speed, the lighter the burn. And with power, the higher the power, the darker the burn. So as you can see on the graph here, um, this is just a representation, but a 10-10 laser setting is going to burn exactly the same as a 600-100. Um, these are just numbers I'm throwing out there, but on the graph you can see um, how that works out. Uh, on some of these test arrays that I've made, you can see the exact same thing. If you go up here, I wish it would focus better, but... You see on this line here, they're pretty much the same go up the graph. Okay, and you can see really good visualization here as to where it starts to indicate on the paper, on the image. Same thing with the wood here. If you look at it, these are pretty much the same. Now these numbers aren't even, so the graph's not even, but um, you can see on on the graph that 158.10 looks awful familiar to 33.305. You know, um, so don't um, get hung up on the numbers. That's all I'm saying. And while we're talking about not getting hung up on the numbers, um, don't get hung up on the name either. People are always like, "Well, what materials do I tell I'm using?" doesn't matter uh, when you put in um, a setting you know um, 600 speed 100 power um, on your machine it doesn't care what the material is that 600 100 setting is going to burn at 600 100 no matter what material is listed on the machine the only uh, reason that they do that is so that you can get the little graph to pop up on the screen that gives you a visual of already done test burns on the screen so that you can look at it and you can pick a number to make the setting on. It's great and uh, and you know I use it a lot on on certain things but after a while it, it's not don't get hung up on what the name is you need to know what the settings are. On your settings, um, always make a test array for stuff that you've never used before. After a while, you'll be able to guess pretty darn close on what it's going to be. It's all based on the hardness and the density of the material that you're using. Um, but always do a test array. And what I do, I do test arrays. Um, Today, you know, say today I'm using a 20 watt machine. I'll throw this in here and do a 20 watt test array on it, save the file, and then the next time I'm using the 40, I'll put the same material in there and run it. Same thing with the 2 watt, um, and then I'll just keep this piece of anodized aluminum. Now, whenever I do a piece of anodized aluminum, I got all my settings right there. Um, there's there's settings in the computer. Um, but there's nothing like having a piece of well, a piece in hand that you're using, especially if you use the same type of material over and over again. If you hold on to your test arrays, they're awful handy to have and making your decisions in the future. Okay, here we are inside We Create Make It. We've got an image up on our screen, and we're going to turn in our settings on it. If you uh, click up here where it says Material. You can change it to any of these pre-listed materials. Again, these are just a visual representation of what uh, the laser is going to do to your image. You click wood, basswood, three millimeters. If you're working on a wood or something that um, isn't listed here, um, for example, if I work on a piece of oak, oak is not listed on the screen here. I can pick walnut uh, and know kind of how 
you know, our cherry and, and look and see how the um, image is going to burn on there. Uh, the settings might not exactly be the same, but it'll give you a little representation of it. Um, just the, the hardness of the wood and the color of the wood um, is what I'm, so, what I'm looking for on the representation. But let's say we got three milliliter basswood and we're going to put this cat on it. Okay. Once I've selected it up here, and I've got the high, cat highlighted here, I can scroll down if I'm on fill and grave. That's a big one too. A lot of people will be like, I can't get the thing to show up. Well, if you're on line and grave, it doesn't, you don't have that. If you're on fill and grave, now it'll show up down here. Okay, so there it is. I click on the representation down here. And if I click here on, oh, let's say, 453 and 55 that will change it it's not up here it says that's what it is that now that's going to print at that those power settings it automatically drops them in over here you can manually put them in here by changing the slide highlight the number put in what you want uh, on power on speed number passes by default it's one but if you want to go over something twice make it darker you can do that and line density um, it defaults by it's to, to 100 the higher the number the more dots per inch um, so it will look a little darker the higher you put it it will look like it's burning a little deeper the higher you put it um, it's all how you want it you can use it after a while play around with it um, but on the colors here like I said before if you look 158.33 is an awful lot like the 305.55. It looks an awful lot like 453. If these numbers were in identical increments up the scale, you could just run a line up and see it. They're, they're jumbled up because there's just only five settings on each side. But if you were to run a test with the higher numbers on each side, you'd, you'd see it better. But I mean, it's pretty close there. Okay. So once you've got your numbers queued in, you go ahead and, and um, do your uh, autofocus, and then you go ahead and start and, and print it out. Again, it does not matter what is in this material line up here. If you put in 66, 453, the laser is going to burn at 66. 453 no matter what you have selected up here this is only so that you can get a visual representation down here people have asked well what if my settings aren't right well here's a little helper here if you put your settings in here and you send it to the machine and it's too light do not touch the material in the machine don't move it don't do anything with it once it's done that, you just come back here to the screen and you hit autofocus and start and run it again. And it'll make it darker. Uh, once you pick it up and you move it, there's no way that you're going to get put back in the same spot. So whatever you do, look at it in the machine before you take it out. Um, if you make it too dark, well, it's too dark. You can try to lighten it up by washing it, sanding it, whatever. But um, if you go too light, you can always correct it by doing it again. And lastly, on settings, if you belong to any of the Facebook groups, here's the We Create official group. There's other groups out there. In all of these groups, at the top of the page, there's discussion, featured, members, events, media, and files. If you click on files, you scroll down. Right here is a list of 20 watt make it flat cylinder pass through materials presets. Um, presets for all kinds of different stuff. But um, they're all in spreadsheet formats. There's a lot of good files out here. Um, but you can click on them and they will tell you what the settings are. Um,
Okay, so all you have to do is you pick one of these that you want, whatever, there's 20 watt ones, there's 40 watt ones. Um, some of these are PDFs, some of them are Excel spreadsheets. I'm just going to pick one here, 40 watt vision, pass through cylindrical materials, presets, whatever. But it's over here it's listed as a spreadsheet, so I'm going to click on it, or double click on it. And then it'll pop up on the main screen here with spreadsheet here. Once it's there, click on it. It'll download it. Click on open file. It'll pop up. And there it is. It's got the wood, what the actual material is, power, speed, pass throughs for engraving, all the information you need for fill engrave, and all the uh, information you need for cut. People that take the time to do this save everybody. A ton of money. It's a great resource. It's out there. Use it. It'll save time. A lot of times people will put in what do you ha or type in a post and put what do you have for X, Y, and Z. Um, then they got to wait for a response and you know who knows what you're going to get. You could pull this sheet up, print it out, and have it, or pull it up as you need it and get what you need, and you'll have your response back long before somebody answers your post. It's a great resource. Thanks to the people that do those. Use it. <laughs>